It's time for our Seen and Unseen segment, where we expose the cultural stories of the day. And for that, we turn to Fox News contributor Raymond Arroyo. Now, Raymond, the producer said you had a question for me. What I, in I the world do is indeed, that? Laura. What is the top earning movie in the world right now, Laura? What is it? Oh my gosh, I have no idea. Box office topper. What is it? I don't know. I don't know any of the movies. Okay. I don't go to the movies. It's it's called The Battle of Ye Lake Shangjin. It's a Chinese propaganda film. It's based on a Korean War battle in 1950. So far, Laura, it has made 808 million dollars. And it concerns a spunky Chinese group of soldiers who battle and defeat the Americans. Even though the battle uh, was considered a failure at the time, the Chinese regime now says it was not a failure. They're serving up patriotism and heroic masculinity with intent, Laura. Remember when we made movies like that? Sergeant York, Saving Private Ryan? We may have forgotten, but the Chinese, they haven't. And they're doing this on purpose. And they're rounding up critics, by the way, who are calling <laughs> them out on this film. Are, are, have we gotten a... Um, movie review from LeBron James as he chimed in with his view of this film. I'd like to. <laughs> well, or any of these studios, you know, they don't say anything about China. They won't even put China in the movies anymore because they don't want to offend or lose that marketplace. But don't worry, Laura. While the Chinese are giving their people movies filled with patriotism and masculinity, we give them ancient serial killers, Jamie Lee Curtis, and a documentary on Mayor Pete. Oh. You spent so much of your life hiding who you truly were. Did you feel like you were able to be your true self for the campaign trail? I made Pete promise that we would have fun. This is the only chance you'll ever get to vote for a Maltese American left-handed Episcopalian gay war veteran <laughs> mayor. <Melinda. laughs> Look, this is an amazing thing we're seeing, Laura. Uh, no, we're the only country that takes the losers and makes documentaries about them. Where's the Jeb Bush documentary, I'd like to know? Amazon, get on that. But, it, you know, we're lear learning the wrong lessons from China, Laura. We're learning the lesson of aggrandizing and lionizing members of the regime and excluding any other voice, rather than the more important lesson, which is patriotism. And male leadership might not be a bad thing to show your citizens. The Chinese are clearly preparing culturally for something here. Yeah, we don't we don't need to make up great stories of heroism or right. bravery. We actually have them. They're our history is filled with them, except Replete in today's with schools. Them. We I want agree. to downplay them. Now, meanwhile, what uh, what's this piece from the Anti Defamation League, advising kids on what costumes to wear this Halloween? <laughs> Yes. Well, the ADL are warning that costumes can involve cultural appropriation, Laura. For instance, kids should avoid dressing as Native Americans because they say it's not a costume, but a sacred part of who they are. I guess nuns, priests, and rabbis did not make the cut, apparently. Then there's this guidance, quote, Many children are attracted to traditional gendered costumes. Think girls who love princesses or boys who are obsessed with action heroes. When that is the case, it's best not to reinforce that these are the only appropriate options available. Be mindful. You may, be, you may have students who feel excluded oh. and marginalized by overly gendered, the overly gendered way Halloween costumes are marketed. Now, Laura, with this guidance, what is the poor kid supposed to wear? I mean, they can't dress as a cowboy. It's too gender specific and they kill cattle. Uh, you can't dress as Aladdin. That's cultural appropriation. Can't dress as Pinocchio, I guess. That's Italian appropriation. I guess they can dress as rocks and polar bears. Maybe that's okay. No, well, I remember one year my mother wouldn't get, you know, we were like 13 or 14. We just wanted to go out and have fun, my friend Pam and, and, my, and myself. And we, we just dressed up as bums. Like, so we put like, in the, you know, the bum outfit that's just like any rag you have around the house and some charcoal. Well, you couldn't do that anymore, right? No bums, well, because you can't call people I, I bums. hate to tell you, the ADL literally calls that out. They say, do not dress as hobos or bums because you're making fun of the poor. You, gotta, you have two selections, rocks or polar bears. That's all you've got, Laura. Laura, there, there may be no Halloween, by the way, at the White House this year. I'm sorry oh. to report. The administration has announced the Bidens will not be celebrating the holiday as other presidents have, handing out candy. Biden is headed to Europe, to the G20. He will be meeting with the Pope. And I guess he'll be dressed for the season as a faithful Catholic, 
we'll see how that plays. Right. So he met with Pelosi, you know, pushing yes. abortion on demand. Now he's going to go for Biden. I mean, maybe there's a pull aside and he goes, you know, to cut that other stuff out. Do you think that's going to happen, Ray Ray? Well, it looks like it's going to be a climate summit. I, I don't think they'll ever get onto those moral issues. Oh, yeah. Who, who cares about those other issues of life? Let's talk about those of climate. All right, Arroyo, Turnabout is Fair Play. What is the number one oh. downloaded single on iTunes? Well, I, I would have said Adele, maybe. Uh, is, is it something else? It's rapper Bryson Gray's new timely tune. Media lying, ignore all the crying, they build them back better, but only the Taliban pilots on strike, but to Joe it's irrelevant, open the border, lose all the order. Let's go Brandon, you ask questions, they start banning. Hey, hey, let's go Brandon, let's go Brandon. Okay, this is the Let's Go Brandon song. It, this has been number one since Sunday, I just looked it up. And two songs now titled Let's Go Brandon are ahead of Adele. What? So I was almost right. The, yeah, music is an indicator, though, Laura, of where people are. And, and, and I guess it's probably a good thing that Biden's headed to Europe. I don't think Let's Go Brandon is topping the European charts just yet. But, hey, it's early in the week. I think that other song needs to, they need to work on sort of the, the choreography. <laughs> or the, they need to <laughs> spruce up the video a little bit. But that is wild. Okay, I'll, if I hear one more piece about Adele, I mean, she's been everywhere. So it's kind of yeah, well, a shocker. Yeah, well, she has. But this... This Let's Go Brand, that, that reporter who sang the, said the Let's Go Brandon thing, she should get royalties on this. <laughs> My goodness, exactly. Raymond, thank you.